what led them to be who they are in a research which is destined to rank as one of the dozen most brilliant in conception skillful in execution and illuminating in results in the history of science a young man but 26 years old threw open the windows through which we can now glimpse the subatomic world with a definiteness and certainty never even dreamed of before had the european war had no other result than the snuffling out of this young life that alone would make it one of the most hideous and most irreparable crimes in history robert milliken in august 1915 the allied commanders hatched a scheme to capture a ridge in the turkish peninsula to gain the advantage of higher ground among those deployed was a unit of inexperienced brits sent on a march through dangerous gullies the soldiers never reached their destination all of them lost their lives fighting a highly outnumbered ottoman army and among the dead was a promising young scientist named henry mosley who had reshaped the periodic table just before shipping off to war and his death would reshape the way militaries determined who was and was not sent to war henry gwyn jeffries mosley was born in the town of weymouth england on november 23 1887 he came from a long line of scientifically inclined men most of them also named henry mosley His great grandfather, a Calvinist preacher turned unlicensed physician, hung out with the likes of Erasmus Darwin and Thomas Beddoes, members of a radical group of writers and intellectuals whose research contributed to new theories of medicine and politics. His mathematician grandfather presented a paper to the Royal Society with new standards for naval engineering that were adopted by shipbuilders across Europe. His father who was also named Henry was a naturalist and anatomy professor at the University of Oxford and had sailed on the famous HMS Challenger a warship turned scientific research vessel his mother Amabel was the daughter of a mollusk biologist mostly sister Marjorie taught him to identify plants birds and other wildlife and inspired him to pursue the family's scientific traditions Mosley was a very promising schoolboy at Summerfield School and he was awarded a King's scholarship to attend the Eton College. Mosley developed a love for experimentation at Eton College and the school's annual scientific society exhibition, essentially a high stakes science fair, he demonstrated how a bubble of phosphine gas exploding on the surface of water emits a flash of light. As an undergraduate at Trinity College Oxford, mostly fit right in with the other students. He attended church, rode on the Thames, and joined the debate club, sometimes to the detriment of his academic pursuits. One of his tutors described him as very erratic and rather untidy, but works very hard. When a student newspaper called for recruits for a new officers training corps, mostly enlisted, writing to his sister Marjorie, he told her he could find no sound argument with which to confute the advocate of universal service when he was in drawing drilling or studying plato mostly was reading scientific journals and devising experiments he built an early version of a cloud chamber which showed the paths subatomic particles take through water vapor based on the designs of physicist charles wilson Mosley also wrote class papers on the structure of the elements and the radiation they emitted. By the time he graduated in 1910, he already had an offer to join Ernest Rutherford at the University of Manchester. Discoveries in chemistry and physics were being made at an unprecedented rate in the decades before World War 1. The noble gases were identified in the late 1890s, x-rays were discovered in 1897. And in 1902, Rutherford made real the dreams of alchemists when he found that elements could transform into other elements through radioactive decay. So when Mosley accepted Rutherford's offer to join him at Manchester, the budding scientist was poised to uncover something novel about the nature of matter. 
but things did not go so well in Manchester. Rutherford tasked mostly with studying radioactive isotopes and teaching undergraduate courses, assignments mostly found dreary. Rutherford was unhappy when mostly shifted his studies to X-rays and mostly made the decision to leave Manchester and return to Oxford without the promise of a job. As he waited for a position to open up, a sympathetic colleague offered him laboratory space in which he continued his X-ray research. Around this time, Mosley came across the work of Antonius van den Brock. Brock made the bold claim that atomic number, which at that time was simply the position of an element in the periodic table, might actually be equal to the amount of charge in the atom's nucleus. In his makeshift laboratory at Oxford, Mosley realized that an X-ray spectrometer he had recently built could put van den Brock's theory to test. Testing every element he could get his hands on mostly showed that X-ray frequency increases as atomic numbers grew larger. Later, atomic numbers were found to equal the number of protons in the nucleus of each element, and this was the birth of the modern periodic table. Mosley presented his results, and chemists and physicists around the world immediately took notice. Mosley's research did not just force a reorganization of the periodic table. It also had practical applications, including predicting as yet undiscovered elements through their atomic numbers. For the first time in history, scientists had a clear map directing them to new elements. As if his explanations of the periodic table were not enough, Mosley also discovered a new non-destructive method to find out which elements are present in any sample by bombarding the sample with high-energy electrons and looking at the frequencies of the resulting X-rays. These X-rays turned out to be as good as a fingerprint for any elements present in the sample. At the time, this was a particularly welcome technique for rare earth chemists, as the rare earth metals behave so similarly that to analyze a sample containing these elements could take years of work, and Mosley's technique could now do it in minutes. In 1914, Rutherford and Bragg recommended to the University of Oxford that Mosley should be appointed to a chair of physics that was becoming vacant there. Mosley, however, had different plans. When war broke out in the summer, he volunteered as a signaling officer. After the training in the military camp, Mosley was camping under thistle-covered Turkish cliffs with his fellow soldiers far removed from his upper-class comforts in England and his ultimate fate was to die in this mission. Mosley was only 27 years old when he died. Scientists around the world were shocked by the absurdity of the situation. Rutherford wrote, The loss of this young man on the battlefield is a striking example of the misuse of scientific talent. Isaac Asimov later asserted that, in view of what he might still have accomplished, his death might well have been the most costly single death of the war to mankind generally. Rutherford and other British scientists successfully petitioned the British War Office to revise its recruitment policies. Never again was a promising scientist knowingly assigned to a combat role. If he had survived, mostly might have been a contender for the 1916 Nobel Prize in Physics or Chemistry, for which the prizes were not awarded that year. Charles Berkla, another physicist who had published research on how X-rays were absorbed and emitted by elements in unique patterns, received the award for physics in 1917, which of course was developed on Mosley's work. Mosley made remarkable contributions to science within four years of his post-graduation, and in his death is a good example of use of human resources in an inappropriate way.